Hey, what's up? It's Chanel. Welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. Today we're going to be blasting Relapse Records, Bongzilla, a Marijuanakin, amazing fucking Roper artwork right here. So good. Killer fucking stoner doom, whatever you want to call it. But seriously, this is some amazing heavy as fuck shit. And it has uh, Dixie Dave on it. And, you know, Dixie Dave from Weed Eater. Just an amazing release from fucking Bongzilla. Not my favorite. Gateway is probably my favorite. But uh, this is up there. This is some fucking fire. Literally. <laughs> so, you know. Kind of put me in the mood to uh, go over an album that, you know, a lot of bands in the Doom genre kind of jock a little bit. And uh, that's going to be Black Sabbath, but I'm going to be talking about something you don't really hear too much about, and that is Never Say Die. I do not have the vinyl version of this, but I do have the 1996 reissue. Now, if you have no idea what this is, this is the actual last... Well, besides all the reunion stuff and 13, this is the last Black Sabbath record from the first 10 years with Ozzy on vocals. He even says in here, it was right before they got Dio as a permanent vocalist, they were getting ready to do a 10 year anniversary tour with um, Van Halen. And um, they ended up having to get uh, fucking Danny Walker to do vocals. And Ozzy was quoted when they got Dio that he better get a bulletproof vest if he's going to go up on stage and perform Paranoid and War Pigs. We all know how wrong Ozzy was, but he went this certain direction, made the Blizzard of Oz, and I can't complain because you had two separate Black Sabbaths to choose from. I mean, Heaven and Hell by Black Sabbath is, like I said before, one of my favorite Black Sabbath albums. This is probably a lot of people's least favorite, but it has some songs on here that are worth your time. And it's nine tracks, originally released in 1978, and, uh, yeah, 10th Anniversary World Tour with Van Halen. And that's fucking sick. I always like seeing, you know, like, fucking old pictures and program shit. Cocaine! Yeah, cocaine is bad news. Never say die. Like, I, I really do like this art direction. It just doesn't match Black Sabbath. It's very, very strange. Like, and there's pictures of, like, Geezer Butler wearing jorts. What the hell? I don't know. It's just very, very strange. To me, this photo kind of sums up probably the feelings at the time. Like, you know, Ozzy was off on his own little cocaine bender ego trip and everybody else is just trying to riff the fuck out like look at Iomi's face right there he's just like what are you doing man and Ozzy's just being a fucking mess it even says right here the late 70s were a troubled era for Black Sabbath vocalist and founding member Ozzy Osbourne quit at the end of 1977's technical ecstasy world tour almost splitting up the band. Tony Iommi, Geezer Butler, and Bill Ward soon found a new frontman in the form of ex-Savory Brown vocalist Dave Walker. But this lineup, the first change since the band started 10 years prior, lasted no more than one TV appearance on BBC Midlands. Look here. Program performing Junior's Eyes, which is one of the best songs on this album, and Ozzy soon returned to the mic stand. The band relocated to Sounds Interchange Studio in Canada to record what would eventually become Never Say Die, another studio album, as opposed to the live opus many fans wanted. Well, well now they're just overloaded with fucking Black Sabbath live albums. 
Seriously, I don't even know if mine's official, bootleg, I have no fucking clue. <laughs> we'll go over that, that's for another video, but... Like, Johnny Blade's on here, killer fucking song, Junior Eyes has one of the coolest bass tones, fucking Hard Road, badass. But this is like pretty much nine tracks of Sabbath really, really being experimental. I love the synthesizer at the beginning of Johnny Blade. It sounds like something out of like a fucking John Carpenter film. It's great. But... I can't understand why people don't like this as much as the older material. It's kind of a departure, whereas it's not as, like, bluesy. It's way more, like, you could tell that somebody at the record label at Warner Brothers was like, hey, times are changing, disco was around, um, yeah, disco was around, so... This isn't a disco album. <laughs> it's fucking Black Sabbath. Come on. This is just something that, you know, it exists in the Black Sabbath catalog. And a lot of people just are like, eh, fuck it. Like, it's not Paranoid. It's not Volume 4. It's not Sabbath Bloody Sabbath. It's not Sabotage. Like, who cares? This is some good shit. It's Black Sabbath. Like, if you like 13, then yeah. This is awesome. Like, it really is. Like, it's not your typical Black Sabbath. And like I said, a lot of people, you know, they don't they don't like this album. They don't even consider it, like, a Black Sabbath album. And I don't understand why. Like, it's the original band lineup, so, you know, you don't really have that excuse. But when Ozzy left to form the Blizzard of Oz with WizKid guitars, Randy Rhodes, rest in peace and go into worldwide, worldwide superstar success as a solo artist thanks to Shannon Osbourne or Sharon I hate you so much I don't even know your fucking name right I really hate I can't stand her they're, they're divorced now right I don't even know her fucking last name now and I don't fucking care but I'm pretty sure you know she she's the reason Bill Ward is not well, I didn't get to see Bill Ward play at the last Sabbath show in Philly, but whatever. But here's the thing: they shouldn't be, they shouldn't have worried as the band went from strength to strength with the injection of new blood, as they continue with their worldwide success, returning in 1980 with Heaven and Hell, one of their strongest albums in years. And that's where Ozzy had that um, comment about. He hopes Dio better be wearing a bulletproof vest if he's going to cover some of his fucking tracks. But, like, Johnny Blade, I want to bring up that track again just because, like, the synth intro and then, like, into, like, the riffs and stuff, it's the closest track on here to the Black Sabbath that you, you know, you love and you grew up to love. Because this really is different. The production's different. But at the same time, it's still fucking Black Sabbath, and you can tell it's Black Sabbath. Like, Geezer's bass tone sounds phenomenal on this fucking album. And that's why I wish more people gave this a fucking chance. Because it's worth your time. It's a Black Sabbath record. Like, do I really need to say any more? Like, come on. If you're a fan of Black Sabbath and you don't give this a chance, I don't know what to I don't know what to tell you because you're probably missing out on some cool ass fucking tunes that you didn't even know really either existed or you just ignored them when you were younger in the 80s if you're a little bit older. This album's worth checking out again. It's worth your time if you're a Black Sabbath fan to begin with. I mean, it is my least favorite out of the original fucking albums because they're fucking Brilliant! I don't know how they one up themselves in the beginning. Like, the self-titled, a lot of people will just say, oh, like, that's my favorite. Like, uh, I have to go with Volume 4. It's just my, everything about it, I love it. That was the album that made me love Black Sabbath. And also, I love Sabbath Bloody Sabbath. I love when they started experimenting a lot more. But, this is... A lot of experimentation and a lot less of the bluesy 
riff heavy Sabbath that you love, but Ozzy's wail on here, it's great. He sounds amazing, probably thanks to drugs, but you have Never Say Die, Johnny Blade, Junior's Eyes, Hard Road, Shockwave, Air Dance, Over To You, Break Out, and Swinging The Chain. All music by Osborne, Butler, Iomi, and Ward. Produced by Black Sabbath. So, 1978, this originally came out, and disappointed a bunch of fans that thought they were getting a live album. Which is very strange. Nowadays, most people would be pissed off if a band... Well, they were pissed off. Oh no, it's actually the opposite, I'm sorry, that was confusing. But what I meant was, nowadays, like, let's say, you know, for example, I'm just looking, Mogwai says that they're going to put out a new album, but then you find out it's a live album. You're going to be like, what the fuck, man, come on, I, I wanted to hear some new, some new tunes. And I think that's where the Black Sabbath fan base, I think that's where their heads were. When Never Say Die came out, they were expecting something else, and instead, hey, you get nine new Sabbath tracks that I'm sure haven't been played in probably well over a decade or whatever. Probably they might have played some of this on the first reunion tour, or maybe on the 13 tour. I definitely know they didn't play any of this on the end, <laughs> because uh, it's just... I'm, I'm not laughing because it sucks or anything. Like, I'm just laughing because I don't know why so many people don't even know this exists. Like, the artwork totally doesn't look like a Black Sabbath album. I have no idea whose idea this was. I'm guessing it had something to do with cocaine. But, um, I, I can't speak for the band. But there's a real cool little backstory behind the album. Lyrics and whatnot. People going nowhere, taking for a ride, looking for the answers they know inside, searching for a reason, looking for a ride, no one is innocent, partners in crime. Yeah, you know how it is, I can't sing like Ozzy. I can do the Johnny Blade. <laughs> He'll keep fighting till the end of his days. I don't know, it's a killer song, so... I shouldn't even try to do Ozzy's voice because it's just not doing any justice to how good his wails are on this album. Like, And I'm just still confused by the whole like Top Gun. I know this was way before Top Gun, but like it just reminds me of... It's just fucking weird. Like, why is there a jet engine schematic in here? Like, it's just fucking weird. But, uh, I, I was glad, I was glad as shit when, you know, you have the Heaven and Hell album, fucking Born Again, there's some killer Sabbath albums without Ozzy on vocals, but this was the end of an era, and I just needed to go over with it with you guys. Um, yeah, Never Say Die by Black Sabbath, I have to give this, uh, probably an 8 out of 10. Just because you have so much other kick-ass Sabbath to listen to, this is probably going to be last on your list. But, hey, it's worth a fucking listen. It starts out really, really strongly with Never Say Die, Johnny Blade, Junior, Junior's Eyes, A Hard Road. Then it gets a little, like, you know, weird. Like, super kind of weird. But then kicks back in with, like, Breakout and the final track, Swinging the Chain. Just cool, cool stuff, and I like it. This is remastered from the original master tapes with faithfully restored artwork. Black Sabbath, Never Say Die on Warner Brothers. Well, actually, Gim Castle Limited. I thought this was Warner Brothers. Maybe this is the England version. I have no fucking idea. I apologize. I'm not the fucking biggest Sabbath historian. But, anyways, Never Say Die by Black Sabbath. Killer stuff, and we've been blasting Bongzilla. Americ Juanakin, killer fucking doom. Get into this. And, as always, thanks for watching. Stay safe. Smoke up.
hails. <laughs> <laughs>